Hello and welcome to today's Bible study and we are in 1 Kings chapter 18 today. I've got a bit more spread around me today, I've sort of picked up a few more resources that I'm finding useful. I've got my All the Names in the Bible book, I absolutely love that resource, it's so good. It gives you definitions and meanings of all the names including towns as well as people in the Bible and then I have this beautiful resource as well, the Keyword Study Bible in Hebrew and Greek. So it's got so many amazing things in here. So it's got the word, it's got related um, text and it's got meanings um, of names and words in the original language too um, to help you get some context. Anyway, it's so good. Um, I love all these. So yes, anyways, let's get into the word because that's all we're here for. So we are in chapter 18. So we've had, we've met Elijah who has had um, a really powerful start to his story in the Bible. And he ended with an amazing miracle. So his faith was so strong he helped bring a boy back to life the widow who was looking after him and he was fed by ravens and kept alive while he's in the wilderness as well so he's a real faithful servant and 18 looks quite a long story so let's see what goes down okay and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying go show thyself unto Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth right so we know that in the previous chapter, God said to Ahab via Elijah the prophet that I'm going to create a drought because they kept relying on Baal, the demon, to worship him thinking that he was the one that was providing the rain. So in a way to show them that God was the true God, he cut the rain off and he said, right, go to Ahab and I'm going to make it rain so that he can prove that I'm God. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Abadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Abadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Abadiah took a hundred prophets, and hid them by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water. So this is three years later, okay, so we've had a drought for a long time, and now God said, okay, now it's time to go back. So Elijah's gone back to Ahab and he came across Obadiah, who was Ahab's servant, and he was in charge of the palace. But he believed in God, not their fake gods. And so what he would do was he hid a hundred prophets from Jezebel and provided them with food and looked after them. Because the queen, Jezebel, cut off the prophets of the Lord, so she was she was killing the prophets, which is why Abadiah had to protect them. A horrible woman. Jez was killing prophets. So Obadiah had to hide them. And Ahab said to Abadiah, Go in the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. While we're here actually, and I've got this book, I didn't check the names of these people. I do like to do that every now and then. I just kind of want to see what their names mean. Let's start with Jezebel. Curious. Jezebel means there is no prince. Uh -huh. And what about. Do I look up Ahab? Let's look up Ahab while we're here. Father is brother. So Ahab is the seventh king of Israel. That's good to know. Uh -huh. I won't read too much more because I don't know what happens yet. <laughs> At the moment, I just want to know the meaning. Okay, what about Elijah? Oh, I think we know what Elijah means. I looked that up already. The Lord is my God or something. Yeah, the Lord is my God. Who else do we have? Obadiah. Obadiah is servant of the Lord. Yeah, okay. Good to 
know. How far did I get? Right, so Ahab sent Abadiah away to go into the land to get water so they can keep the animals alive. And Ahab went one way, Abadiah went another way. So they split, split ground so they could cover more ground easily looking for water. And as Abadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him and he knew him and he fell on his face and said, Art thou my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What, what have I sinned? Thou wast deliver my servant unto the hand of Ahab to slay me. And the Lord, as the Lord God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whether my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation, and they found thee not. And now thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. So he's like, are you trying to get me killed, bruh? Like, they've been out looking for you and they can't find you. You want me to go back and tell them, oh, I found Elijah, by the way. And it came to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, the spirit of the Lord shall carry thee, whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find me, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Right, so even though he's afraid and is like, I don't think that's going to end well if I do what you've asked me to. He's like, but I... I fear the Lord. Was it not told my Lord when I did uh, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of the host liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Abadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. While they had split and Obadiah was out searching for water, he came across Elijah and he said, go tell Ahab I'm back and I want to meet him. And Obadiah obviously feared that he was going to uh, kill him. So if Obadiah told the king that he'd found Elijah and then Elijah didn't show up, Ahab would kill him, right? But Elijah assured him that He's going to turn up and he's not setting him up for failure. Okay, so Elijah came across Obadiah. I told him to tell Ahab he wanted to meet. Abadiah was afraid Elijah wouldn't show up. He'd get killed, so he also had to put great trust in Elijah. Just like the widow from chapter 17, who Elijah said, have faith, feed me first, then feed yourself, even though you're starving, you're dying of starvation, literally they were. He said, feed me first. Another common theme we see in the Bible is being tested. God wants our obedience first before the blessing. Uh, so Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab, Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? <laughs> is it you? So the, they met, okay, and it was like, Ahab immediately cast the blame for everything that was going on in Israel on Elijah. Like, it's not his fault that you're worshipping false idols. How many times do we see that, right? So yeah, anyway, he's trying to pass the blame. Ahab passing the blame. Refusing to look at his own sin of worshipping false idols, maybe. Does that question on mind Ahab? No? So yeah, because Ahab and Elijah had brought the message that there's going to be drought, he, Ahab blamed him. He's like, it's your fault because you said there would be rain. <laughs> A classic case of don't shoot the messenger, right? But yeah, Elijah just spoken for God. But he's taking it out on the messenger. And he just wouldn't take responsibility for what the nation was doing. I'm not shooting the messenger here. 
And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baalim. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. But Elijah was bold. He said, no, -uh, it's not me, it's you. Did you ever think that maybe you're the one who's not following the commandments and worshipping false idols? Love that. He was a bold. Elijah was bold and spoke the truth as we should. He said, it was Ahab and your family who are ruining Israel because you've, you're following Baal. And so Elijah then <laughs> set up a challenge. He's like, right, get all of Israel to come meet me <laughs> at Mount Carmel, yeah? And bring all your prophets, the 450 who worship Baal and the other 400 who worship Asherah. So he's got like, that's 850 false prophets to these false gods and he wants them all to meet him. So uh, Elijah set up a challenge for 800 plus of the false prophets. Go Elijah, go Elijah, go! <laughs> so it's, we're having like a, a face off here, we've got mm, thousand almost false prophets against Elijah, a true prophet, a prophet of God. So Israel was suffering because of failed leadership. Ahab was leading them down the wrong path, worshipping false gods. But Elijah was representing the right way. And he wasn't represented or tied to anyone specifically so he could speak the truth. And he didn't care who was in power. So he wasn't able to be influenced. So Elijah wasn't able to be influenced. He didn't have to, he didn't work for anyone. He didn't care who was in power. God was his boss. And when God is your boss, you don't fear man. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. So he agreed and he got all his prophets, brought them to where Elijah said, and he took up the challenge. So in order to take up the challenge, you gotta be confident that you got a chance to win, right? So we've got almost a thousand people up against one. So he was pretty confident. So he would have been confident, but he just doesn't know God, does he? Confident in order to accept. So we've got 900 to one, good odds for him. But not when you have God on your side. So this was the face off now, we're going to find out who is the true God and Israel are going to have to make up their minds for themselves. Are they going to believe, are they going to believe the false gods or are they going to see who really is in power and follow the one and true God? And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how, how long have, halt ye between two options? If the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. So he said, you know, how long is it going to take? Make up your mind. You can't worship both when it comes to spiritual matters. You know, there is the truth and there is everything else. We can't worship both. And that's the other thing I see commonly among unbelievers. Again, I feel like I'm surrounded by a lot of unbelievers when I'm in these TikTok lives because it's just question after question and they're good questions because people it shows what people are battling with in coming to accept Christ they have these questions um, and yes they can come off really rude and aggressive and blasphemous at times but their questions show their state of mind and what is blocking them and there are many who want to believe both there are many people who literally make up their own gods they're like well I believe in a higher power but I don't believe necessarily in the bible so I'm like okay so you're making up God you made up your own religion you can't you can't have that you can't have both there is truth and there is everything else <laughs> which is a lie and it's false there can't be more than one truth it's it's impossible and there are so many that just take little bits of what they like and they're like there we go I've kind of made up my own idea of what I believe is true 
and what Elijah's saying here is true. It's like you can't be double-minded when it comes to the spiritual. You can't have God and the world. So it's it's true though. So can't um, keep wavering. Need to make up mind. And what's interesting is no one answered him. No one said a word. There was just awkward silence. You know, and these are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and they couldn't even confess that the Lord is the one true God. And by failing to speak and to choose, they're choosing, really, aren't they? They're choosing. If you don't declare that the Lord is God, then you've made your choice. Um, no words speaks volumes. We have to say it out loud. Declare with your mouth that he is king. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, remain, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and, I, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. So we've got a first challenge now, and we're going to see, right, which God's going to make the fire. Is it going to be your fake God that can't do anything, or is it going to be the one and true God? And the fact they said, yeah, cool, that's fine, it's well spoken, like, yeah, it's cool, means that they were just like, yeah, we agree to that. So did they really have faith that their fake God would do this, or they just kind of come neutral at this point? Or is it because there were so many of them, they thought, that they would win. Um, well, but they had confidence in their numbers. And there's another thing I want to comment on there about there's a particular religion, I won't say which one, but there's a particular religion who likes to um, use the argument that we're the fastest growing religion in the world, how, how we must be the truth. And it reminds me of this it's like, just because you've got the numbers, okay, it doesn't make you true. It doesn't make what you've got the truth. Just because lots of people have been deceived, <sighs> doesn't make it the truth. And that's just something that, um, that I thought about, because that I've heard many times as well. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning, evening, until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped on the altar which was made. <sighs> shock. What a shock. I'm going to write ha ha. <laughs> I'm going to write ha ha. Uh, okay. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them, and said, Cry aloud, for he is God. Either he is talking, or he's pursuing, or he's in journey, <laughs> or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awake. Oh, that is so for Elijah, you sassy thing, you. That is so funny. So he's basically like, oh, maybe he's sleeping, or maybe he's busy and he's not answering you. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's actually also really interesting because um. I hear some, some people do mock other religions and they get all upset, they're like, that's not very Christian of you, wait, wait, wait. And, and this is actually it's quite interesting that Elijah would do <laughs> Because their gods are so ridiculous, we, can, we have to mock, because it's like, it's ridiculous. What about the people who, who think crystals heal? Like, it's a rock, like, bro, it's not doing anything, it hasn't had power. Why are you giving it power? So maybe in those instances, it's okay to mock, who knows? I don't know, it's not something I've ever thought about before, um, mocking in the Bible, but their gods are so ridiculous, why shouldn't we? We have to highlight how ridiculous it is. That's interesting. I'd love to know what you think about that. <clears throat> is it ever okay to mock? Why didn't he mocked? Is it because their gods are just so ridiculous we can point it out? Or should we not? Who knows? 
uh, and they cried out and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets uh -huh, till the blood gushed out upon them oh goodness and it came to pass when midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any answer nor and nor that any nor any that regarded <clears throat> okay so false prophets they've gone first slaughtered their bull called on their fake god from morning until afternoon so they strike so they <laughs> so they started dancing around and didn't make a difference um, and then they became so desperate that they started shouting and cutting themselves like what ew you shouldn't have to do it so desperate that they began shouting and cutting themselves can you imagine how embarrassing that is it's like if your god was real he wouldn't really allow you to be doing that to yourself just to get his attention but no nothing's nothing happened still and that's what happens when you trust in someone or something other than god nothing silence they can't help you the rocks can't help you the sage won't help you your false gods won't help you False gods won't help you. And so Elijah, while they were doing that and being absolutely ridiculous, he he was being a sassy, sarcastic commenter on it, and <laughs> he's like, oh, maybe he thought it's done. Maybe he's gone away. Maybe he's having a nap. Um, so Elijah, he just wanted to make it clear that their false god and his religion were a lie. Um, so making it clear their false god and fake religion. Here's a lie. To be honest, that'll deserve to be mocked because they were worshipping him and he was not god. Uh, so yeah, that's my, that's my viewpoint on it anyway. So he was completely jeopardising the altar, what from an outside perspective. So adding water to jeopardise the altar and make it seem impossible. To start a fire. That's how you prove <laughs> that God's the one doing it. Under all circumstances, if everything looks like it's just not going to work, it's all going to fall apart, God can make it happen. That's how you know it's God, because everything looked like it was impossible. How many times have we seen that, like in, in miracles in the medical field, doctors are like, I, I have no explanation, I don't know how this happened. Uh, it's God, <laughs> always. Where was I? Um, okay, so he's put water everywhere, making it really soggy. Um, it's impossible that that would set on fire by any man. Impossible. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Aww. Ooh, should I highlight that one? I haven't highlighted it in a long time. So, even his prayer, it's like, do this for your glory, God. It's never, do this for me so I can prove that I am a real prophet and that whatever. It's, do it. So to prove that you're God and to turn the people back to you. Always for his glory. Um, so prayer for God to be glorified. And for his people to turn back to him.
da, 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 da. and then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench and when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is God he is the God the Lord he is the God yeah. and Elijah said unto him take the prophets of Baal let not one of them escape and they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there oh Ooh, okay so that was a big dramatic uh, in my head just now I heard dramatic music as I was doing, 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 like drums and music as the big moment came with the fire I don't know whether God put that there for me to help me imagine it I don't know but I, I felt a big dramatic response here so his prayer was answered immediately um, and it was even more dramatic because now it was evening because the Baalists had all day to try and get their their fire and, and nothing happened so by this time it was late in the evening and so the fire is even more pronounced uh, perfect for a, for a firework display so now evening even more dramatic so fire fell from heaven fire of the Lord fell so came down from heaven even the flames licked up the water that's just that is just scientifically impossible <laughs> but not with God it's clear here the spiritual world is touching the physical world that's why miracles happen and so they responded in the only way you would expect really they fell on their faces and said yes Lord is God and God clearly won and so prophets of Baal were gone. They were all killed. I accepted God. That's the one true God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Yeah. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked, and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. We know the symbolism of seven. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Oh, don't leave it there! What a cliffhanger! <laughs> okay, so... Now, the God, God is not finished with his miracles and he said it's time to lift the drought and famine from the land. And prophet Elijah was told that rain is a coming. So he went to come out to pray. Um, Elijah went to pray before the rain. Interesting, you know, that even though he knows the rain is coming, he still prays. So even though we know what God is going to do, even though we know God has won, we still pray. Um, so yeah, he kept, he kept insisting that they go and check to see if the cloud's there, and he did that seven times. Don't give up just because you don't see it the first, second or third time, think, oh, God's not gonna do it because he would have done it by now, it's taken forever, it's not happening. No, you keep going. And it will probably be on the seventh time because that's how long God likes to take for things. Everything is seven, that's his magic number. I don't like the word magic. That is his divine number. So yeah, keep being persistent. Persistent. And keep praying. Even when you're not seeing something happening, keep praying. And the rain faithfully came because God is faithful. And then he received um, the, like the hand of the Lord. So he girded up his loins and said, this is like he got an extra boost of power from God here to outrun 
Ahab's chariot and he overtook him. <laughs> um, so that's amazing too, got an extra boost of strength from the Lord. Yeah, so without a doubt the power of the Lord was on Elijah and it was a spiritual mountain top but now he was about to enter the valley. Outran Ahab's chariots. Oh, wow. Beautiful. What an amazing chapter. This is a long video. In fact, it was so long, my camera cut out halfway through because it only does, I think, half an hour intervals and then it turns off. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think we've been doing this for a long time. But what a chapter. That was wild and so much to take from it. What I really like doing after I read it, obviously, is for Instagram I do the takeaways. I find when I'm doing the takeaways, it's helping me kind of summarize and take in everything I've just read. Because if I were just to stop here, I, I would probably, because it's a bit overwhelming, I'd, I might forget some aspects. But what I found, I reflected on this yesterday as I was doing the takeaways. And I thought of extra things to add in and that's why I added them to the video. Like you saw things pop up on screen and things I hadn't thought of. So sometimes I get things afterwards and I add them into my takeaways because it's like a form of revision for me, you know, the overview of the notes. It's an interesting way to study. Like I haven't learned this from anyone. I, like I said, I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm studying. I am not teaching, by the way. I don't see myself as teaching. I'm just taking you on a journey with me as I try and figure out how to study his word. Um, so yes, so I'm learning as I go. God is just showing me and guiding me ways that help me learn. If this is helping you learn as well, that is amazing and brilliant. And I do hope it continues to bless you and help you um, get in his word and understand it too. And if you have any tips and advice of other ways to help me learn, um, please do share, I am open-minded. I'm still, I could take things in small amounts right now because, like I said, I am new to it and I'm, I don't have the whole picture of the Bible in my head yet. I cannot wait until I've read everything in depth and studied it all. And then I can hopefully start to make connections and links a bit more um, in the book. Uh, but yeah, as for now, I'm reading it like it's for the first time um, and studying it definitely for the first time. And it's a really fun, exciting journey, so I hope you're enjoying going along with me. Please do leave your takeaways and thoughts that you have, anything that might help, things I've not thought of, anything that might help me learn, or things that you've noticed. And yeah, I liked that one, that was good. I'm looking forward to re-reading my notes to, uh, to do my takeaways so that I can kind of reflect on everything a bit better because that was a lot and I am slightly overwhelmed. So I'm gonna finish my tea have some breakfast and read that before I post on Instagram and then tomorrow we'll see what happens as Elijah has fleed after proving that God is God and not their fake God. Why are you taking out on Elijah? It's not Elijah's fault. <laughs> and anyway look who's got on his team, you're gonna take him on seriously? <laughs> anyway I, I talked a lot today, I feel like it's one of those days where I've you know swallowed a radio and my, my mouth is going and my brain is like, okay, you can stop now. I'm just talking for the sake of talking. It happens every now and then. <laughs> so, yeah, bless you if you stay to the end. Like, wow, you're a trooper. Um, thank you for joining me. I am gonna stop now because I am talking so much. Join me for tomorrow for chapter 19 and I will speak to you then. Have a lovely day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.